arrest them, put them in jail, or actually put them in jail, they came out and they lost their body. This country, they are much more to be done. So I decided to do something specific. At least this, this one area, areas like this, must end corruption forever. I could tell that he was very eminent in India, as 15 of us, former chief election commissioners, former CAGs, but it is still a table of impeccable track record. I told it to be 24 hours, I just made every pause and everybody agreed. Then we went to Supreme Court. I argued that we must cancel the 122 licenses issued in a very haphazard manner. Even if corruption cannot be proved, I know that you know there's corruption, but we can't prove it. We want to have doubt. But the arbitrary way it was given, that is enough. I don't care if money change hands or not, it was an arbitrary way. It was a piece of power. Therefore, cancel the licenses and order competitive bidding and transparent manufacturing issuing licenses. Now and henceforth. And that's what the court has done. Since then, I can tell you with absolute certainty, in spectrum of allocation, there is zero capital. We just change the process. So we must understand how to address it instead of organizing it. And punishment is necessary, but it's the last resort. And in India, it's not the jail term that frightens people. We must have a simple process by which we confiscate all property. If somebody is permitted to develop at a certain level, then there must be fear that the fellow will say that this Kandana and Kandana will get nuts. And that's what many countries do. There is a couple called, I forget the names, but in this paper, Massachusetts. Doctor couple. They defrauded the healthcare system. This happened sometime around 20, 23 years ago. The federal court convicted them on all the properties, all their money, all their jewelry, all their stock was confiscated. They were left paupers. We don't have such practices. And there are mechanisms to involve people in fighting corruption, something like false claims act in the US. I don't want to be this no time. But finally, all of these are things we can do if you are competent public service, a well-meaning public service. If the government has at least half a vision to improve things, if citizens, instead of double housing and maybe Rasta workers, understand how to fight these monstrosities. But ultimately, in India, corruption also is driven by the political system. If you have illegitimate expenditure for work value and other important purposes in the electoral process, the demand side continues to grow. If you shut down supply in some channels, some other channels will open up until the demand is addressed. That's a bigger challenge. But even if that challenge takes some more time, a lot of corruption can be curbed and is being curbed. The country, not everything is as corrupt as it is there, but new corruption channels are opening up because the demand side is not addressed. So, the point is, don't moralize, don't lecture. Understand what is the way to eliminate corruption. And please remember, ordinary people, they feel compelled to be part of the corruption cycle because the price they pay, the loss they sustain, the fighting corruption is far greater than the benefit that they lose. A man called Robert Wade, a very distinguished scholar from Oxford, he studied this 50 years ago in India. He actually spent two, three years in the field. He came up with a model called dangerous based name with equilibrium. Why and how corruption sometimes is so influenced that it's difficult to eradicate. Understand it. Use your brain. Use your passion with your brain and your experience. Then find ways of addressing corruption. Don't give lectures. Don't indulge in slogan joking. Don't indulge in models. Okay, there's a lot more to corruption. We can discuss six, seven hours, various facets of corruption, what the experiences, how to deal with that. But trust me. As a person who fought for life on this issue and succeeded in some areas significantly, by both the public officials and civil society leader, corruption can be curbed. It's not going to be easy all this. It is twofold. The long term solution must come from society. And the only sure solution is we must slowly give up endothermal standards within the caste. You know, how is caste sustained? Because most of you young people, most people in India, have been pressurized by the family to marry within the past. Now slowly, with increasing urbanization, with young people, not because of idealism, not because of the need to remove gas, but if they pursue their own happiness, they decide with which part of they can lead a happy life. 
on that basis, if that person belongs to the same caste, it's okay. But the criterion is that you don't have it. That will take time, maybe another two, three generations, increasing organization, education, etc. Meanwhile, what is the state? The state can do two things. One, you create a framework in which the service delivery and the empowerment are local and effective. 